JP, I'm going to ask you a very strange question. What things really exist? Now, to many people, that sounds ridiculous. But why is this an important question? Oh, oh, Robert, it's a very important question. And it's actually pretty commonsensical why it's important. Here it is. People should live their lives according to reality and not fantasy. I mean, we all want to try to live our lives according to what's actually real. Now, reality is what you bump up against when your beliefs are false. <laughs> and I think that what exists is going, to, your, one's answer to that question is going to shape an awful lot of how they approach life. Okay, so we all can say, not all of us, but most of us would say that the physical world is real. Not everybody. We have these sure. idealistic philosophers and some people who would say it's all an You're illusion right. or something. So the physical world, we got. And what else we got? Well, we have to stop for a minute and ask the question, what is it for something to exist? Okay. Now, that's a different question than does something exist? So, for example, what would it be for unicorns to exist would be one question. Another is, are there any? Those are very different questions. Now, what is it for something to exist? I think something exists if it actually has attributes or properties. So, for example, if there really is such a thing as a number two, there has to be at least one attribute it really has. Say the, the property of being even. Uh, if there were such things as unicorns, there would have to be creatures that had the attribute of being a one-horned horse. Not the concept of it, but the no. actual. Yeah, because the, the concept of a unicorn is not something <laughs> you can ride. It's in my <laughs> mind. You could ride a unicorn if existed. So the concept of a unicorn do doesn't have the property of being a horned horse. It is about something that has the property of being a horned horse if it exists. So when we ask, does something exist or not? What does it mean for numbers to exist? We're asking, is there a range of objects that actually have certain attributes? That's what we're asking. Now, what the evidence for that is different. Now, you ask me, what do I think exists? I think that there is a physical cosmos that exists in space and time. I do not believe the future exists. I do not believe the past exists. I think only the present exists. The, the future will exist, and the past did exist. But Abraham Lincoln isn't being assassinated tense, timelessly in the year 1865 or whenever it was. Which is a view that it some is. scientists have they do. in a four-dimensional universe. past, present, and future all equally and real. And some theologians have That's right. because they see God in this timeless manner. Seeing past, manner. present, and future right. all the right. same. Okay. Right, so but that's not my view. That's not your view. I, I think future and past are not real. The Fine. present is. Okay. I also believe that there is an abstract realm outside of space and time where things called abstract objects or universals exist. Things like numbers, the laws of logic, uh, the laws of mathematics are real. Define universal so we understand. A universal is something that can be in more than one thing at the same time. Like the color red, you can have many red objects, but they have the same redness in all of them. Uh, you can have many constitutions, but they all have the property of being just in each constitution, assuming they're just. So I believe that there are abstract objects. They're not physical. They exist outside in space and time. They would be moral values. They would be numbers, laws of logic, propositions, which are the contents of thoughts, like the proposition snow is white can be communicated in schneist Weiss or snow mm -hmm. is white. Those are two sentences that express the same proposition. Propositions can't be seen, touched, taste, smelled, or heard. They can be in minds, but they're abstract objects. I also believe there's a God. I believe there is considerable evidence for the existence of angels and demons. Uh, I believe these beings are real. They're, they're spirits that do not have bodies. Uh, and uh, I, those are some of the things I think are real. Do you see, taking your last category, God and the angels and demons as part of the, so, the same sort of spiritual aura realm or the immaterial realm? Do they, do they inhabit that uh, separate orb or yeah. plane? Um, um, abstract objects like moral values do not exist in space and time. Angels and demons exist in time and are capable of influencing things at places in space. So they're persons, they're persons. 
but they're not humans. They're persons that have consciousness. They are capable of thinking and feeling and, and being aware of things. They're capable of acting, but they don't have bodies, and I believe they're real, and would, they're in time. And Would you distinguish them from God as you are distinguishing abstract objects from the material world? Are they that different, or are they part of this immaterial world, and you can sort of categorize it both of subsets of, a, of an immaterial world? Yeah, I have the immaterial world as a category. There's the abstract immaterial world and the non-abstract. Okay. The abstract immaterial world includes platonic forms, moral Fine. values. The non-abstract material persons? world, persons including God. Okay. Even if God is not in space and time, he's still not an abstract form. He's, a, right. he's an individual person. And angels are finite persons. Human beings are finite persons with bodies. So is that's there anything else in that realm, which I'll call a immaterial realm, that, yes. that, 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 is not, that are not persons? Is, are, there, are there inanimate things in that spiritual yeah, realm? I don't believe so. I don't think there are counterparts to chairs or anything like that. If by inanimate things you mean, uh, are they capable of, uh, would an angel be capable of being aware of things like mathematical objects and things like that? Yes. Oh, no, but, no, sure. No, I'm but, saying, but no, I don't believe that there are. So when so, you die, when you die, you're disembodied and you no longer inhabit a material realm. But then according to Christian theology and, and, and Jewish theology, there will be a future resurrection of the dead sure, sure. when we will be embodied again. I want to stick with, with, the, with the categories because you had two immaterial categories, your abstract objects, we understand, we'll, we'll get back to that. And then we have this category of, of abstract, uh, 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 then we have this category of, of, uh, of uh, immaterial persons, of which God is one kind and angels and demons are another kind. What I'm asking is, in this category, yes. is there anything else other than persons? No, no not to my knowledge. Uh, I'm okay, so speculating. We're... By the way, I'm, I'm in both realms. Uh, not the abstract and the concrete, but the physical and immaterial. Because as a person, my immaterial soul is a part of the unseen immaterial realm, but my body is a part of the right. concrete. So, so in essence, universe. now we have of this of this uh, non-abstract immaterial realm three things: we have God, we have the finite uh, persons of angels and demons, yes, and we have uh, the immortal souls that 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 you believe in, which is definitely distinct from the other. Other two categories. So we have three three subsets. Yeah, and even of the even animal. I, I okay. Even animals I'll give you have four subsets. Souls that they're not physical. Okay. You can't see, touch, taste, smell, or hear. Okay. The center of subjectivity in a dog. I'll, I'll, I'll certainly give you that. So now I have four subsets. They're all um, beings of some kind. They're I, real. They're in, they actually have attributes. Okay. Okay. They and, really have properties. And, My mind actually has the property of thinking. And right so now. does the dog mind. Yeah, and the it's worth actually has the property of having sensations. Okay. And they're all in that realm. Right. Okay. So now we understand these categories that 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 right. we have. Um, now let's let's go back to the abstract one because I think this perhaps to many people is the most uh, 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 unusual yes. uh, one. Uh, some would argue that to have abstract objects being real would undermine the power of God because there are virtually an infinite number of abstract objects because you could just, just the numbers themselves are uh, all different levels of, 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 of infinities. So with all these infinities that God in the things that he created would be so overwhelmed by all these abstract objects that God will have only created a, 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 a vanishingly small percentage of things that exist. Well, God creates abstract objects, but not in the sense that he brings them into existence, but in the sense that he sustains them in existence. God holds abstract objects in existence by an act of his will, but he doesn't have power over them uh, to snuff them out of existence. Now, is that a big deal? Heavens no, because here's what that means. God can't make 7 plus 5 equal to the square root of minus 1. God can't make redness turn out to be a taste instead of a color. Those are pseudo-tasks. So these aren't real limitations on God because it's not like with a little bit more weightlifting, you might be able to make 7 plus 5 equal to the square root of minus 1. This has nothing to do with omnipotence. It's a category mistake to think that God's inability to make redness not be a color is some limitation on His will. 
So I, I disagree with that claim. I want to get the distinction. It sounds like a distinction without a difference, that, that God can't make them go out of existence. But he did create them? He, su- he creates them in the sense that he sustains them in existence. So it's a continuous but, creation. Yes, but, they, but he necessarily sustains them in existence. They depend upon him, but it's not like he could choose not to, any more than he could choose to not to, to puff himself out of existence. If God would go out of existence, which is contra- they would go out of existence. They would then. go out of existence yes. also. Yes. Because I can conceive of, of there being no God. Yes. But I cannot conceive of there being no number. Well, we're getting into a pretty difficult <laughs> issue now about about conceiving things and um, So you're blaming my limitations. Yeah, That's well, okay. What's I lurking? have limitations. Well, That's fine. Well, <laughs> you're free to point them out. <laughs> what's lurking in the neighborhood is the ontological argument. And are you really conceiving of God if you're conceiving of Him as not existing? Because if He's a necessary being, you can't That's conceive. That's a whole yeah. other So issue. let's not go there <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah, but, but if, I'm going to press you one more time. Yes, do it. If you <coughs> would come to believe that God could not exist, then, then, I, then a, I would believe. a possibility. You would say that abstract objects would go out of existence? I, I would say that if God did not exist, nothing would exist because everything owes its existence to God in one way or another. And by the way, here's why this, import, this discussion is important. The Russian sociologist in the mid-20th century, Petrom Sorokin at Harvard, said there are two kinds of cultures, sensate and ideational. A sensate culture only believes in the physical world and what you can see, touch, taste, smell, and hear. An ideational culture believes, in addition to the physical world, that there is a realm of God, angels and so on, Whatever. And, and moral values and abstract objects. Sorokin said that sensate cultures don't last very long because they don't have a robust enough worldview to sustain values and human flourishing. They're thin worlds. Uh, nothing rises to the level of mattering in those worlds because the only thing that's real is what you can see with your senses. They implode. It is only ideational cultures that are thick worlds. They have a robust enough view of reality which is necessary within which things matter and human life can can actually flourish.